myself a new toy, or I should say a new tool. There's a lot of bucktail spinners out there for the big guys, the muskies, the pike in the world. There's a lot of bucktail spinners out there for the little itty bitty guys who among us did not grow up throwing a rooster tail or something like that for trout. You know what you don't see a whole lot, or maybe it's just because I live under a rock, I don't know. You don't see a whole lot of these things being built kind of in that mid-level range, size-wise, targeting bass. So we are going to use my new tool today to create a custom wire form, tie up a bucktail of my choosing, and then take it out and see if we can catch a little something on it. Or at least see it swim, should the fish be in a finicky mood. So we'll hit the materials that we're going to use on the bucktail itself, the um, platform for the materials will look familiar, but first we need to build the wire form using this guy. So let's do that. So here's a close up of that tool I had already mentioned. This is the Dubro Bucktail Twister. This is um, sized to do big musky. Uh, bucktails which would be wire similar to this this is about 1.5 millimeter which equates roughly to about 0.051 we don't need anything this big this strong so we are going to downsize to one millimeter or something closer to 0.04 ish Clo uh, similar to what you would see on like a spinner bait so the way this thing works um, the wire goes in here initially it's meant to by the way it's meant to go into a vise i don't have a vise mounted anywhere but i kind of find it easier to be able to manipulate manipulate it move it around kind of like it better that way anyway so wire goes in here extends off the top initial bend we do our thing you'll see in a minute and then we transfer that wire over to this side and finish the twist so let's get started just take our wire we want a good inch inch and a half out of the top thereabouts just give yourself enough space so this is the other piece of it it's got a hole here and then it's got that pin we want the pin to be on this side of the wire because we're going to make our first bend by pushing it this way so we'll make that bend just like that and that's what you have inside right and the pin is below so we want to pull this up bring that pin over the top right so now the pin is there and we want to continue that all the way around just like that until it's a little over 90 degrees and it'll bend back a bit looks something like that so now this part goes to this side so we got a little allen um, screw there this part of the bend this side right needs to get underneath of this pin and this shaft goes inside of that slot comes with an allen wrench you can tighten that up I, cin I cinch it down and then I just back it off just a hair so things can move a little bit because it will need to move just a hair. So there you go. You can see how it's underneath of that pin. Everything is all secured. So from here, we take the other end of our tool, slide it in, and we want to turn against this pin because as we spin it, we're going to create our twist right on top so use the leverage of the tool and start spinning one two three loosen that back up pop it out and we'll take some angle cutters here and watch your eyes cut that off we can take pliers now, push that down. You can take a file, kind of get rid of the sharp edge and clean it up as much as you want. So from there, now we're ready to put our beads on. So this will serve as the bottom 
of our bait, right, where it's going to connect to our bucktail via a split ring. So we want, as we think about it, as you're building the beads, right, we want um, the weight to be closer to this end. I've got a quarter ounce, I'm sorry, an eighth ounce bullet weight. Slide this on first. I think it kind of, I like the shape of it too. And then I've got some beads here. I don't know the exact size of these. I think they're close to about seven, maybe eight millimeter, something like that. So two of those beads. Choosing the beads, you know, do what you do, but I'm trying to find something relative to the size of the blades that we'll be using. I like the blades to come down um, to not quite cover the last bead, uh, but I don't want them really extended, right? So that's a total of a quarter ounce of weight on this thing. Got to have weight because there's nothing else in the rig that is weighted. So from there, we are going to go with a double blade rig. These are two copper hammered number six Indiana blades. And we want the, the curve facing away from the bait. So we want them like that. We're going to put them on staggered using some fairly large uh, clevises, right? We'll feed it down in, but we don't want to go all the way through. And then get the other, make sure it's faced the right direction. That one goes in next. And then our first one finishes, and then our second one finishes. So that's what you end up with. They actually make double clevises like this that are, that are connected. I will be doing that again. That are connected at the top that make it really convenient. I have some of those, but they're too large for um, the size hole that I have in these blades. So let me get those back on, and we'll continue. All right, see? There we go. All done. See, they're staggered, just like I was saying. I went ahead and put one more bead on top, and they come down just so that they start to cover that last. It would be a bead here, and for me, it's a weight, but that is the setup. Now we need to finish it on the jig. The only difference is, before we twist it at the last step, we're going to add this barrel swivel. It's one that uh, Reed and I got a while back for uh, either catfishing or I've actually used this size for Carolina rigs as well. Uh, it's nice and sturdy, big and fat. Definitely going to want something like this on um, your bucktail because this whole unit is going to spin, which is kind of nice when that bucktail is spinning back here with all the deer hair and flash and all that good stuff. Really makes for a pretty cool presentation. So, don't want to have the line twist. Make sure you go ahead and add a. Um, a barrel swivel now or you can do so afterwards with a clip whatever you want to do so before we get too far into this you can see I've got it loaded up ready to do that first bend and you can see how much space I have here these these um, beads this whole unit will rise as you twist that last um, for the last step over here as you make your barrel twists so you got to leave enough room otherwise uh, that first bead jams up inside of there and you can't get all the twists that you want you will have to manipulate the beads a bit here, get it to move up, or push those beads down and around. See what I mean about not having it in a vise? It's almost easier to deal with outside of a vise, in my opinion. There we go. We are ready to make our final twist. Got some room there, swivels in place. Grab our tool and start to turn one two and three and there we have it complete setup ready to be attached line tie here split ring here onto our bucktail with wire form taken care of now we move on to the bucktail itself and we are going back to the tried and true if you've been around the channel for any amount of time at all you have seen me use these on a regular basis 
This is that 28 millimeter fish shank that we have used in the past for the Whisper series, for a smaller version of this for the hybrid uh, swing head, all kinds of good stuff. So we are coming back to this. I thought it would be a great platform to use to put our bucktail and all of our other goodies on. Here we are, all loaded up. We've got some black 210 denier flat wax. So we'll go ahead and seal this guy up, close the, um, the open sections there. We're gonna use a um, split ring to put our wire form on that we just created, but also a split ring to connect our treble hook that will go inside the bucktail. So no need to worry about connecting anything to this right now. We can go ahead and seal this bad boy up, give us a nice thread base to work with. So we've got plenty of, um, like I said, plenty of base to put our material on. So the first material we're gonna put on this guy is something that's just gorgeous. And full disclosure, couldn't get it at Barlow's. I have uh, sent a note to Matt Barlow and said, dude, you gotta find this, you gotta start carrying it because it's beautiful. Look at that stuff. I mean, is that not gorgeous? Whiting sells this, it's called a bugger pack. Whiting bugger pack. So until Barlow's gets it, you can find this at Lure Parts Online, that's where I got it. This is the Dark Bar Ginger uh, Bugger Pack. What we're gonna do here for the first part of this build is I want to find feathers like that. So it's it's kind of dark on the, on the base and then it goes into that barring. Maybe not quite that much barring. Uh, let me find one. Something more like that. See that? Solid all the way through and then just the tip has that barring. So I'm gonna see if I can dig out four of these and that will be uh, the first element of our build. All right, I have my feathers of choice. This is one of those few instances where you don't have to worry so much about the um, feather twisting on you because they're gonna be all over the place and the whole rig is going to twist in the water. So however it lays on there, it's good to go. So we're gonna put all four of these on. You can stagger the length a little bit if you want, like that one there is a little bit shorter. I, can, I mean, I can make it longer, but if I wanna purposefully stagger these a little bit and give it some texture and depth, which I do, then you can certainly do that. So let's get all four of these tied in. There we go, that looks good. So next step is uh, some bucktail. And I got two-tone bucktail today. We're actually gonna go do the lighter tone underneath because I got a little bit bolder tone on the outside or what I think is bold. So I'm reaching now for bucktail and tan. On this build, I'm gonna go all the way down to the base because I want some flare on this thing. So I'm gonna pull it from right down there and you can see it's pretty long hair, which is why I want it on first. The other hair that I'm gonna use is gonna be a little bit shorter, so this undertone will extend beyond that um, top layer. Fairly sparse here, and we don't want it to go all the way back. We want these uh, feathers to be some of our longest elements. So I'm taking this back to about my clip here. That looks pretty good. So some light wraps, hold it in place. Put that thumbnail in it. Spread it around. Make sure you got good coverage everywhere. And then go ahead and give it a pull. See if we can get some of that flare. Not a too terrible bunch, but that's all right. And we'll secure that down. Looks good. So next, some flash. I've got two here. I've got some new, um, just brown flashaboo, and I've got some holographic gold that I've used on the channel before. I'm gonna pull pieces from both because I wanna blend them. And this is gonna go next because I want the flash to be inside 
that outer, uh, this layer of bucktail, and then the outer layer of bucktail. There we go. I wasn't very bashful. I've got a good, I don't know, four, maybe five pieces of both, three or four at least of both, grouped up there together. We're gonna go on one side and then wrap it over to the other. Right to the middle. It should extend beyond your uh, feathers. We're actually not going to cut this because I like the look of it. Um, it helps the silhouette in my opinion. To have that um, flash go all the way to the back and beyond. So, there we go. I am going to try to spread it out just a hair though. Pull some down and pull some up on top. Just like that. Beautiful. And we can secure that in place. On to the second layer of bucktail. Another new color for me. This is burnt orange. Uh, so again, we're going to go down to the bottom of this bucktail and pull from that section that has the most flare. So our second layer, we want to be less, right? We don't want it to be as long as my clip because we want that bottom layer to show through. So I'd say right about there looks good. And a couple light wraps to hold it and get it distributed. Uh, now back to the bugger pack. So the bugger pack also all all different kinds of lengths on these, but they do have these little guys. This guy right here. There's a bunch of those, not a whole bunch, but enough. And I pulled out two already. Aren't those cool? So we're gonna put these on either side of our of our bucktails. So let me measure one up here so you can see what I'm doing. I kind of like the fluffiness, and in this case, we do want to utilize the um, structure of the stem, right? We want to we want to utilize this bottom portion in the fluffy section when it gets flat, because we want to put this right on the side and have it stay there. So I'm going to go down to the fluffy section, kind of pull that back. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, good length. I like it. So let me trim that. And we'll get both of these on. Didn't like how that last one was sitting, so I picked out a different one from the other side of the piece. So I got one from this side. I went to the other side to find one. Usually, not always, but usually that means you get the offset, right? So, and I like the color of this one better. Check that out. So we're going to use this one on the other side instead of that other one. So from here, we could go ahead and whip finish this, wrap it up, be done, and it would be pretty sweet in the water. Uh, I think we can go one more level, and that is pulling out the ice dub. I'm not looking to completely cover up these thread wraps, but I am kind of wanting to give it an ice dub, uh, flashy uh, point, I guess, head, whatever this is. I don't know. The end, right? So we're going to use a rusty brown... It's that really nice shiny copper see that so I think it's gonna look pretty good we first need a dubbing loop not a super long one we're only looking to get I don't know two or three um, rotations of this maybe thereabouts get your uh, dubbing loop tool out and then start to feed this stuff into the loop I'm going to pull that back and start to spin so it's got some tension on it. Looks pretty good. We'll pick it out nice and light just so it gets nice and buggy. That's the top. We'll do the bottom. There we go. 
go. Get around. Hang that off. All right. Now, I'm going to wet my fingers and pull those back so we get a nice layering effect. So put that on and just brush them back as you go. You see, we don't, we're not going to cover up that whole thread base, but I wasn't looking to either. There we go. Now we can tie that off. There we go. Two behind, a couple in front, hold it in place, and now we can snip that loop. From there we can whip finish. Two, three, four, five whip finishes there. And then grab our little same tool that we had before and um, just brush this out lightly to blend it. Doesn't need much. Pulling it back when we uh, spun it, right? That helped layer this already, kind of nice. We'll seal it up with some Sally Hansen's. I like Sally Hansen's for this uh, application just because it gives a little shine to the, uh, to the threads. So from here, all we gotta do, I got a size two treble hook, fairly beefy, right? Already got the split ring on it. I believe this is a size three, or no, this is a size four uh, split ring. 25 pound um, breaking strength, so more than enough for what we need. So I will put this guy inside of our bucktail off camera, and then we've got our um, wire form that we made, and that's going to go right off of the uh, nose of this thing also with the same split ring got another one of those 25 pound black um, sp split rings so let me do that and i'll show you guys the final product and then if it stops raining we can get out to the lake and show you guys how this thing swims some get hooked the day they're born some fall into it as time moves on some are defenseless when cupid strikes but I've been heartless ever since I opened my eyes I'm gonna run from love Yeah, I'm gonna run from love Ain't nobody gonna get me to slow it down I'm gonna run from love Some are weary and some are lost Some keep their spirits up at any cost some pay the price and some only talk but i've been feeling nothing since the day i could walk i'm gonna run from well i think that was a success glad you guys were able to see some of the action i guess the recent rains here hadn't completely blown this place out so i was able to get some good shots of it underwater uh, i think it was a good build uh, i've got some stuff to learn got some stuff to experiment with so a couple takeaways, pros and cons. Definite pro. Uh, hopefully you guys noticed in those action shots, but the feathers that I used that had that dark solid line, I really liked how as the bucktail would spin, those lines would show up and I just thought that action was really cool. The long, Those long feathers, the long flash, but the shorter bucktail I thought made for a nice profile. Good bulbous and then came down to a, a pretty sharp point and it's just moving all over the place. I would experiment with the placement of the weight, putting more weight in the butt. I think that would maybe improve the uptake action, which is a, is a con. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and I would also find some double clevises and switch out the two single clevis for a double. I would cast it and instead of just as I engage the reel, I could feel those blades engage. I had to pop it 
and sometimes pop it multiple times before those blades was, would engage. I think what was happening was those two blades, as they sank down in the water, they would just seal up together, and until there was enough disturbance and water could get between them to break them loose, they wouldn't spin. So a double clevis that's meant to keep one, on, one blade on one side, one blade on the other, undoubtedly would help that. Overall though, for my first inline build, yeah, I think it works. I hope you guys agree. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos just like it, then click right here. If you're curious about the name SDG, click on this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Vice.